There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the classroom, but it looks different. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're not rearranging. We're uh, we're cleaning. So isn't this exciting? Okay. So see, there's where it would be, and here's where it is. <laughs> It's actually organized. I'm really proud of ourselves. All right, so today I wanna to say good morning to everybody. Hi, Jean. Give a little few people, hello, Annette. Give a few people to sign on. Um, we brought Eileen in today to teach us square in a square. Um, I'm excited, every time Eileen comes, I learn, which is really exciting for me. Maybe for you guys, but it is for me. Um, hi, Margaret. Hi, Annette, Lynn, Marcy, welcome, welcome. Make sure you uh, comment hello, um, give me a wave, give me a smiley face. Uh, you can share this video, which is great because I think a lot of people will wanna see this. Um, the bonus, I don't know if you're getting some emails telling you we're on YouTube. So if you ever want to watch these videos again, we have a YouTube channel and these classes will be on there. They're still on our Facebook page. When we're done, um, I keep them there, but we also are putting them on our YouTube channel, So that, which is really fun. My live sales are not going to YouTube because once I do my live sales, it's over and done with. So he, yes, all these classes will be on YouTube next, uh, for now on. Uh, we're, we're getting it going. Um, the other thing is, don't forget, tomorrow I will be on 9 and 11, and I'll be doing my little shopping spree. Um, Saturday, as always, is always um, my big sale. So wake up on our cooler morning, to my understanding, and treat yourselves for Mother's Day. I mean, that's what this is all about. So, all right, I'm going to get off the camera, and I'm going to turn over to Eileen for you guys to all learn square and a square ruler. See you guys soon. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's really good to see you again. I'm so glad to be back, and I'm being very square today. This is what the ruler looks like. It's a six-inch trim ruler. I'm going to lay it down here on a fabric so you can see what the markings look like. It's a six-inch trim tool square. Oh. It's a square on a square. Square You're on right. a square. Okay. Right. Well. Okay. You can see on the white fabric that there are some black markings. And if I move it over here to the black fabric, you can see there are some white markings. So it's hard to see the white markings on white fabric, but uh, that shows you that we're going to be working with both of those. Now, also, I want you to see that on this ruler, you can do a three and a half inch trim square. And here you can use it to trim it. And if you're doing some two inch uh, center squares, they also give you this little two inch center square that you can use. But we're primarily gonna use these other markings. This is what it will make when I get Alyssa to move over here. Um, here is a sample square, square on a square. All right, here is another one. And you'll see that there's a center square that is two inches. And then we're going to put some triangles on the outside edges and keep building it until we end up with a six inch square. And that looks easy to do. And it is with this ruler. Remember when you get it to save your black paper. Again, I'm very big on having you save the instruction sheets from your rulers because this is very helpful and it will show you how to do it in case you don't want to listen to a video and you want to look at the instructions on the paper. So I'm going to lay this um, aside. We'll move our black and white fabric over. We want our ruler. I am using uh, two rotary cutters when I cut with my rulers. Um, I use this bigger one when I use the stripology ruler to cut the squares uh, so that they are to size. And you'll notice that on this mini, 
uh, stripology ruler that you can cut one inch increments, one and a half inch increments, or you can cut two and a half, although it's a little bit smaller. I can also turn this ruler and they now have quarter inch increments on this side. Although you don't have a zero cut, you have a zero measurement. And then uh, you just have to learn how to use that. But then when I turn it back again, you will notice, oh, I'm gonna get my fabric back. You will notice that you can cut a two inch measurement, a three inch, a four inch, all the way up to a six, a six inch. I think it goes to seven. Yes, here's your seven. Um, so you've got those sizes and this is great if you're doing small work, okay? So I just want you to know that um, when you cut squares for this project, you may want to use the stripology ruler. When I say cut squares, I use this, uh, this 45 millimeter cutter with a stripology ruler or the bigger one. I'm telling you today that we have here some 10 pack blades, all right? Sometimes you can only get one at a time, but here for $32 is a 10 pack. Uh, we just got them in, we were out for a long time. Now, if you like to use the smaller 28 millimeter cutter, which I do when I trim around the square on the square ruler, they also have a pack of how many is this? 10 pack of the 28, 28 millimeter size blades. So I, I grabbed these to show you because I'm always looking for the 10 pack. Then you get more for your money. Okay. Now I'm also, because I'm the AccuQuilt lady, I'm going to show you something. For those of you who do not have AccuQuilt, when you do the square on the square, you're talking about cutting squares. And you are going to need a two inch square, a two and a half, a three inch square, this one is in gray, uh, a three, a three and a half, and then a four and a half. And when you use a ruler, you're not going to cut this one in half because this goes in the center of your block. But all of these, you're going to have to take the time to cut your squares into triangles. And you are going to need two, for example, here, you're going to need two pieces of fabric so you can cut two triangles or you, yeah. Okay. Actually, you're going to need maybe more than that. I got, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. But anyway, then what I do is I take them and I arrange my colors so that I'm all set to do a square. Now, if I do it with AccuQuilt, this is what's so cool about AccuQuilt. I can cut my two inch square. I can cut my small triangles, that is my first. I can cut the next size triangles, just cut them out. My next size and my next size, and you'll notice on all of these that they're, they're already cut off on the end so that when you sew them on, you're going to go from this point to this point and you'll have your quarter of an inch. So today what I'm going to do, instead of cutting all of these because it will take us extra time, I'm going to show you how to use the AccuQuilt uh, triangles. Now I started out by taking my two inch square, which I cut, and these come out of the six and a half inch, the six inch cube. This is number two. And this will cut four squares at one time. So that only takes one piece of fabric. And I started using a charm pack. And these were the colors I started with. There were different blacks and grays. And then I bought some, uh, I don't know, half a yard of that to put in the center. And that was my color combination. So I started by cutting 
my two inch squares. I can cut the two inch squares using my stripology ruler. So then I took two triangles and I started by folding this in half. And then I went ahead and folded it again. And I creased the dickens out of that so that I could see where my center is going to be. Now, then I took my triangles that I had cut and I folded them in half and put a little pinch there so that I could go ahead and line this up on the center line on top of that triangle and then stitch from here to here. Now that's what I did here. So this is what it looks like. I put the square on top and I stitched from here to here. And then I turned it and I folded the next one in half, the next triangle, and I put it on this one and I stitched it from, from whoops, here to here. And then of course, we can take this and press it, and we're gonna press it toward the triangle. Now, I'm just gonna use my fingernail for right now because that works. Rather than going back and forth to the iron, we will iron it in a few minutes. Now I have to take and put another triangle on here. So I'm going to fold this, and then I'm gonna line the centers up and look at on AccuQuilt, because I so nicely cut, there are no points sticking out. It just lines right up there. So I know that I've got it correctly in the center. So I'm going to go to my, oh, before I do this, remember last time I talked to you about figuring out your quarter of an inch? Well, the machine I'm using today has a 1C foot on it that is wider so that that's not a quarter of an inch. And I don't know, can you see okay on this? If I put my needle down in here so it goes on a line, you will notice that the side of the foot here does not line up with this line. So here's what you do to solve that problem if you don't have a quarter of an inch foot. I'm gonna lift my foot, my needle up. Now this time, I'm going to line this up so the outside edge of the foot lines up on the line. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna go behind. So they can see that. I'm going to line it up so the outside edge lines up on the line. Let me just mm -hmm. move that. Now I want to move my needle over so that it will line up with a quarter of an inch line. So I go up to my machine and I hit my needle until it goes to that line. Now when I stitch, I can follow the outside edge of my foot along the line or the outside of the fabric and I am now stitching them a quarter of an inch. Okay? So I just want to show you that tip because if you do not have a quarter of an inch foot, this is a way you can move your needle so that it lines up and I'm, I'm sort of stitching. I'm, <laughs> I'm not stitching straight. That's what happens when you're nervous. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the center on my, um, to where my, my foot is, and I'm taking it off. I'm going to use my quarter of an inch foot, and that would be a 30, on a Bernina, it would be a 37 or a 57 or a 97. This is actually a 97 um, D foot. I'm using it on a 480 machine. I do not have access to the D because I am using um, 
a lower, it's a machine that just doesn't have that. It doesn't have the dual feed. But I can still use the quarter inch foot. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going back to where I started here. And we're going to sew this, this on. I just want to get it lined up again because I moved it. And I'm sewing with black thread. I'm also sewing with my bobbin. <laughs> Which sounds sort of strange. But when I do, now you see, I'm getting a nice quarter of an inch seam. When I sew square on the square, um, I often will use my bobbin for my thread. What does that mean? If, if Alyssa looks up to the mm -hmm. uh, top here, I've got a bobbin up here because it gives me a way to clean my bobbins and get some empty bobbins from projects I've done. On this particular project, your thread doesn't matter as far as color goes. So, and I like to use leaders and enders because then I don't end up with long threads. Now I'm going to take that and notice because this is the AccuQuilt, when I fold this over, it actually looks like it's lining up. So then I'm just going to reach over and grab another one. Now, when you're doing it with a ruler and you cut your squares in half to get your triangles, when you sew this, you're going to end up with points. That's perfectly all right because you're going to cut those off when you use the ruler. So now I'm going to line up my center and because I've got a leader in there, it makes it much easier to just follow right in with my project. And I'm just going to take, I, I can cut this leader off and use it now as an ender and the beauty of that is it means I'm cutting my threads so I don't have long threads that are getting in the way. But a lot of times I'll take another piece and just use it as my ender. So there, I have one little square, isn't that cute? And if you only need that size square, which is about, I don't know, three and a half, you could stop there and put it into a project. But now I'm going to crease that good and I'm going to go and just tap it with my iron so that it looks like so. So we'll see over here, and I'm going to use a little bit of a little bit of our best press. I forgot my best press sprayer today. Oh, those good sprayers! We have some. We have them. For the sale. misters. And if you watched the video on Saturday, the misters are good for best press if you're sewing, but they're also good for sanitizer if you like oh. alcohol and you need a, a nice sprayer to sanitize anything with your alcohol, uh -huh. the misters are amazing. Yep, there you go. So we can, you, you can use those nice. for your best press, for hair, for water, for <laughs> wetting down your hair, or you can also put alcohol in there to sanitize your areas right now. They're also good for misting your plants that you're growing in the spring. See? Just make sure you mark them what's in them. <laughs> that would be my advice. You don't want to stick your spring growing weed feeder in there or grass feeder and put it on your hair or your best press on your sanitation of your desks that would be interesting okay so now i'm just going to grab this so you can see this little square right here is my first cut my first round so to speak so I'm going to take that, which you are not going to be able to see, and I'm going to put it on top of my quarter inch stitching, which you can see because I did it in black. And you'll see now that there also is a dotted line. And when I cut at that point where the black stitching comes together, you're going to have that nice quarter inch seam. Okay, now I'm going to have to turn this a little bit so I can, I can cut. I'm kind of working at an angle here. 
there, let's do it that way. This also gives you an assessment on your whether you're stitching a quarter of an inch because that gives you the quarter of an inch seam. And I'm just gonna double check this side because I don't think I did it. I love that you're showing these rulers because now, now when I look at, at these rulers, I understand isn't them. Isn't this an adorable little square? It is. I call that huggable. <laughs> I love to make little huggable squares. Now, I'm going to my next color. Here we go. And this may seem slow and tedious to you, but I have discovered that if I show you how to do this, that when you want to make them, you don't have to call me so much and ask questions. <laughs> Although I love to talk to you. Now you see, I folded that. This time, I'm going to line, I don't have to fold the other square because I'm going to line this little point right here with my folded triangle. And so I go and I stitch it. Now I've got my leader in, I'm going to just stitch my quarter of an inch. And when I stitch across this point, can you get, I don't know if you can get that, Alyssa. Can I show yep, them? Yep. Will I be able yep. to see it? Okay. All right, when I get here, you can see where there's like an X. And you are going to make sure that you do not stitch to the left, but you're going to stay on that point or a little tiny bit to the right so you don't lose your point. Okay? All right, so. Now, because I'm using a different machine, I have to... Sometimes your stiletto help, helps here, mm. or your little scissors. Um, because that's an advantage to having a D foot because um, my fabric stays in place. But when I uh, don't have the D foot, sometimes it will. But you see what happens then is my point's going to be okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest of these on here. And uh, I'm just going to quick fold this. Again, here is repetition for you. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to start stitching. When I get to this point where that little X is, I'm going to stitch either through it or a little to the right of it. Now, can I do chain stitching on this? Sure. If you're making a bunch of these squares at the same time, then you can do chain stitching. And you can use your gizmo and cut them apart. When I do these table runners though, I enjoy seeing how the fabric is going to play together. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. Because I started out with a black and white charm pack. And as I showed you, that worked fine until I discovered that I thought it was a little busy. So I came up with a solution. And I'll show you my solution. <laughs> I'm used to my foot picking up here. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more. Cut off my leader and ender, and you see I don't have any long threads. Fold this. I'm going to put this right on the middle, and this is our last side here. And then I'll show you what I mean by how I thought my black and white squares were a little busy when we go over to the ironing board. Okay, so I am out of thread in my bobbin. Hang on a minute. Tell them about our Acucool event. I was going to. All right, I'm going to switch and talk to it. 
So I don't know um, if you guys have gotten emails and seen our Facebook. We have a virtual AccuQuilt event next Tuesday, May 12th. 10 to 12 is the cut time quilt more. Um, that is $10 to sign up. So you can call us and sign up and it's $10, but what the $10 you'll do after the um, class is you can apply that $10 to your purchase of AccuQuilt things. The other one that we have is from, oh, I'm gonna mess up the times, two to four, two to four, which is another $10 class, virtual class, and it's the Mastering Go Cube. So that's a new one. That's one we haven't had yet. So if you have any interest in the AccuQuilt and you're not an AccuQuilt owner, sign up for the first one from 10 to 12. It is a virtual class. You pay $10 to us. Um, we'll send, we'll tell you it's, you have to have a Zoom account. And then that morning, we'll send you a link and then you sign on that day and you get to watch a virtual class. Instead of being in the store, you're virtually um, watching it at home. And that is the, from 10 to noon is the cut time quilt more. And then the um, from two to four is another one. And that's another $10 that is um, mastering the Go Cube. So we have two virtual classes coming up Tuesday, May 12th, 10 to noon, and then two to four. Um, they're both $10. So I just wanted to give you that. Um, so, uh, and then as you know, with um, how Eileen is so actively into AccuQuilt, she will um, be here for any of your questions or any of your education later. After you purchase an AccuQuilt um, product, she's here to help you because she is our AccuQuilt um, guru for us. So I just wanted to um, put that out there. I think she's ready. Perfect. I'm gonna. Can I also? Yep. Say I'm gonna. Next Friday. Next yep. Friday. Hold on. I'm gonna turn around and you can tell them that. Next Friday, fabulous Friday. We're going to do some practice with embroidering with AccuQuilt. Some people uh, have asked about whether or not it's a lot different from, you know, other kinds of embroidery, and I think you'll find it's very similar. But we're going to do a class on that. So. Um, someone has a question. Do you need an AccuQuilt to use the Accu, AccuQuilt Cube? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes. That's what it fits in and that's okay. what it's used for. So now you'll notice here that, look at, look at and I kind of did this on purpose, that it, this piece is sticking out and you're going to have pieces sticking out when you do it with a ruler as well, when you cut your squares for your diamonds. But don't worry about that, okay? Now, I'm going over to the ironing board. I am going to just press this quick. I'm going to spray it a little bit. And at the same time, while I'm here, I'm going to show you the project that I've been working on that I started with um, oh, the squares. <sighs> now, you'll notice that I started with these gray and white squares, and then I decided it was just too busy. So I had some fabric at home. Some of you have had this fabric. It was in my stash. And I cut that up and put the red in it. And now I think it's going to be a really nice table runner. But it shows you the fun you can have with your fabrics, making different squares. And I just could make these squares and make these squares and make these squares. <laughs> I understand at the Williamsville store they also have an 8 inch square in the square ruler. So if you wanted to make a bigger square and add more triangles to it, you can do that. Okay? So I want to show you that. I also want to show you that in the 6 inch square there is uh, a number five die that looks like so. See, mine even needs cleaning. But this, with one piece of fabric, will cut four triangles. And that's all you need for one of these squares. You see, this will cut these little gray triangles. Now with the next, um, the next size, which is my black and white, that is die number four. 
and this will cut with one piece of fabric it will cut four triangles all right and that is for the black and white one okay so now we're going to actually use the ruler this time here's my black and white we're going to use black okay you can see this black line it says block a2 the first one said block a1 but now we're doing block a2 and we're going to take that black line and I'm going to put it on the wrong side of my fabric and line it up on my quarter inch stitching where I added each one of the triangles. Now I'm going to trim it and again when I trim it you see how it evens this up that's no big deal and I'm going to come over here now I'm going to turn it so I can do the other two sides. This is block A2, and I'm putting it on here so that when I trim it, the seam line will be there for me for the next round of triangles. And look at how much more huggable this is. Isn't that cute? Now the next round you see is going to be like so. And this triangle I cut with this die. You see, I actually write on mine too, but this is die number three. And um, yeah, what I do is I write on here the size fabric I need to put on the top. But if you're just using a piece like this, you're gonna angle it a little so it's in line with your, your die that you're cutting. And this time I had to use two pieces of fabric because I needed four triangles, okay? All right, and then I can sew these on. And I can go ahead, is it all right if I go ahead and do this? Mm -hmm. It's not taking too long? Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm just gonna quick fold these, make a crease. And again, you can see, because I use black thread, that I'm putting this, this little, piece here where there's an X. I'm lining that point up with the fold in my triangle. And then I'm going to stitch it from this point to this point, go right through that middle. Someone asked, is there a name for this square? It's square square, square on a square is the name of it. Yep. Yes, you can, there are quilts that are made that have square on the square in the quilt. And it's nice to know that you've got a little ruler that you can use to make sure that they're really square. Otherwise, what I find is I try to do things, they end up a little wonky. And I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like my work to look, look wonky. I would like it to look like I actually knew what I was doing when I did it. Let me use these scissors. So I'm taking off my threads. And you see, look at how nice that point is because you go right through or just a little bit above that particular point. So we're going to take another one. And you'll notice I also am putting it on the opposite side. So I'm putting, I put one on this side. Now I'm putting it on the opposite side of my square. What happens to me on this machine, which is perfectly fine, is sometimes when I get there in the middle, the um, bulk will make it want to move a little bit. If it does, it's not the end of the world because it still is saving my point. You see, my point looks fine. All right, so I'm gonna crease this with my finger just like so, and I put my other one on. I am a great one for when I teach, having people realize that 
even though we're taking the time to do this, it's the repetition that helps you learn the lesson. Because <laughs> if I do it just one time and say, okay, and then you go ahead and do it, and that's a finished block, you don't ever really have it in your brain. And this way, you're really getting it. I go a little farther, I've got a longer thread there. But you see, I still cut my thread so I don't have a long one. I'm going to crease this over like so. Turn it around, we'll put the last one on. I have had a lot of people take this class and thoroughly enjoy it. They go home all turned on because they can use up some of their pieces that they have at home. Or, But you know, when I go on little shop pops places, I actually look for color combinations that I can get a half a yard of here, half a yard there, that'll make really nice square on the square patterns. It gives me something to look for. <laughs> if I'm not working on a big quilt, then I've got some little projects that I can work on. These make great table runners. Okay, see, look at that. Now, I'm going to press it. I'll go back over here. Now, some people would say, aren't you going to trim these these pieces, you see these pieces that I've got here? They're like, and you'll have them when you do the ruler too. You've got all of those. And I'm gonna to say to you, nope, I'm just gonna press them down. Use a little best press here. And if I was not using the ruler, you see how wonky my square is becoming? Look at this one here. It's like, oh my gosh, Eileen, you're not sewing very straight. Well, when you do triangles, sometimes you don't sew straight, but you will notice that all of our points are just fine. That's the important thing. <laughs> okay, so come back over here, and now I am going to use, okay, we used A block one, and then we used A block two, and now we are going to use B block one. And B block one is this one right here. Okay? So I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it on top of my quarter inch stitching. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there's a white line there. It goes right along my stitching. And then I'm going to take and cut it. And guess what? Those little tails I was talking to you about are coming off. Whoops. I have a habit of starting to cut in, in too far. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting it down on here. I'm cutting. All that wonkiness is going away. And I end up with another huggable block. Now, this is our last one. So we're going to sew those two on first, and these two here. Now, this triangle I did not cut with a six, in, with a six inch block. This is the number three die in the eight inch block or the eight inch cube, excuse me. And you'll see that in order to do this one, I needed a the five inch square worked fine, but I needed to make sure that I had two pieces in my charm square that were the same color fabric. And so you don't wanna cut yourself short and end up with not enough uh, of the fabric that you need. So again, fold this in half make your crease, and I always take the block, you'll notice, and turn it upside down on the triangle so that I'm matching that little corner place with the fold. If you put the triangle on top of the square, it's not going to work because you won't be able to see 
where you're going to stitch. Because some people would say, well, why can't I just do it the other way? Well, sure, you can try it, but you might lose your points because you might be um, stitching where you don't know you're stitching. <laughs> This is a good weekend to do some sewing if you can't see your family and you want something to do to, to stroke yourself. See, look at that. Isn't that cool? I just, this is like putting a puzzle together. I understand right now that a lot of people are doing puzzles, but when you get all done, you put it back in the box. If you put a puzzle together like this, when you're all done, you've got something you can enjoy. One of my questions, Alyssa, is whether or not everybody is able to hear me this week. I haven't had anybody say anything yet, which is good. You're sewing two more triangles? Uh, two on. more triangles, okay. and then we're done with the square. And then I want to show you about putting the um, one and a half inch in between them which will could you talk about door eight? About what door eight? Okay. okay. Um Alyssa's just saying so, something about the dual feed. Yeah. Mm hmm Dual feed. I I think for people to understand um on the the, yep. What the benefit of is a Bernina with dual feed because you keep on saying on your machine at home has the dual feed and it it makes it easier for you. So I just thought well, maybe emphasize what, on that a little. What you what you notice on on the machines that don't have dual feed is that um, those machines you can use a walking foot on. And it will pull the fabric through at the same rate. So if you have a walking foot and you can see with your walking foot, then you could use it. I have trouble with a walking foot sometimes because I can't see enough and I'm a very visual person. So I like the dual feed, which is why I opted for the machine I did. I have a 790. Uh, you'll notice when you don't have the dual feed, sometimes it's pushed it's pushing the fabric so that I have to lift the foot and I'm having to pull the fabric over just a little bit. With the dual feed, it grabs the fabric from underneath and puts everything through at the same rate. And I do not have that problem. So if you're looking to get a new machine, um, you know, I know Baby Lock is wonderful. They have all kinds of things that I don't know about because I don't do Baby Lock. But, but with the Bernina, this dual feed is wonderful. Okay, so you see, I still have my point, and I have one more, and I'll show you again. You'll see, without the dual feed, perhaps what I'm talking about. Oh, it's. Eileen, because yes. I can't look out the window. Everyone's saying it's snowing. It is snowing. It is, oh my goodness. Going is it down. really? Yep. Oh. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry, <laughs> Merry. <laughs> Merry Mother's Day. <laughs> okay. Now, you'll see, you see, now, can you see that? It's hard. Yeah, all right. Well, it's just starting to bunch there just a little bit. So without the walking foot or the dual feed, I have to just adjust that and make sure that it still goes straight. straight. Now, if you come back here and look, can you see where I stitched that? Because it bunches a little, it's, it's pushing it up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the stitching isn't exactly straight. And I'm not dissing this machine at all. I'm just telling you that that's just one of the benefits of the dual feed. Well, as you upgrade to another yeah. model, that's the benefit of dual feed that you get in the 5 series and the 7 series and the 8 series. See? So now we're going to press it and cut it one more time, which shows you again how to use the ruler. And you'll end up with a 6-inch square. 
and I'm pressing these and see here are my tails again from those triangles that we put on and I always flip it over and I do press the other side because I want to make sure that this is rolled back and I don't have any faults um, stitch in the ditch <laughs> and you'll notice that all of this is ironed out away from the center square okay because we cut on the back not on the front okay I'm going to come over here and this time and I'm going to do this one more time first we did the center square then we did number two a2 and then we did b1 this this one here now we're going to do b2 it's this big square here and i'm going to put that on top of my stitching carol the cube that she used was a six inch yes and then one of them was out of the eight inch cube the triangles that she's she just sewed on now uh, I'm, I'm beginning to use my six inch cube a little bit more. I'm doing the charity quilt for the store and I'm having to make some six inch blocks to fit in empty spaces. So I decided the investment was worth it and it's helping me tremendously. So anytime you're gonna make a six inch cube, it's got the right size triangles to cut. Are you ready for the big reveal? Da, 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 da. Look at that. Now, on the back of this triangle, if you are an AccuQuilt person, what I did was I wrote the dies. If you have a chance to look at this, I did write the dies that I used. So this number two, I don't know if you can see it. I think it's 55702 in the six inch die and it cuts two inch squares. And then this arrow goes down here and the next triangle in the six inch die was die number five. It's 55705. And then the black one, here's my little line. And that's the six inch cube die number four and it's 55704. And then this, this triangle here is die number three in the six inch cube. It's 55703. And whoops, and then the big die, uh, uh, triangle on the outside is from the eight inch cube. It's die number three, and it's 55710. So that gives you, you know, what you can use. So, Two questions. Yep. What is the finished block size? Six inches. Well, six inches. I say six is six and a half. Okay. Yep, six six and, and a half. half. Could you repeat the original sizes of each block? Yes, I can. Uh, it's a two inch square. This is two inches. Then the next one is a two and a half inch square that you cut, cut in half so that you've got, you have to have two, two squares in order to cut it in half and get your triangles. The next one is three inches. So it's two, two and a half. This is a three inch square. The next one is three and a half inches. And the last one is four and a half. Here are mine. One more time, two inches. And then I had two, two and a half inch squares. And then I did two, three inch squares. This is when you're using the ruler. Two, three and a half inches. And then this is a charm pack, but you need two, four and a half inches. And I just use the charm square, you know, to get my four and a half. So that's what it looks like if you're doing. Does that answer that question? Mm hmm. Uh, does the ruler come in different sizes? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, six inch and eight inch is what we have. 
Um, I see a lot of people saying that they want the ruler, so we will have to place an order. So just call the store and let us know which size ruler you want, and we will order that for you. So now come over to the ironing board. These were the, uh, the squares that I ended up with. And I want you to think in terms of doing these vertically. In other words, if I move over on this end of the ironing board and I look at it the long way here from, from bottom to top, think about that being a vertical line. And so then I took and I sewed six and a half inch strips in between it and I made a vertical, two vertical lines. Then I cut my one and a half inch strip to put in the middle. Now the reason I've got it like this is to show you that in order to get this to line up with this on each one of these cross sections, I take my little ruler and my white pencil, because this is black, and I mark two little lines. And I do that on each section here so that it, it lines up like so on each one. Now, when I flip this over to sew it on, I am going to line my black strip up with those white lines and put pins in there all the way up so that when I sew that on there, they all line up perfectly. And when I, after I have it sewed on then, this will look like so. And my lines will go straight across. And the reason I'm telling you this is that there are a lot of quilts out there where sometimes you have to be able to line these up so that they don't look like so. If you don't line it up, sometimes it looks like this and then this one is a little off. So if you take the time on your strip, after you sew one strip on, to, to mark these, then you, it gives you a it's just a little tip. I like your little tips, Eileen. <laughs> so, any questions? This is the this is the stripology ruler that's great for cutting your squares. Um, you can use the bigger one to cut your one and a half inch strips. Okay, remember every star on the bottom here from this is what I call my zero cut. Every star is one and a half inches. So if you're doing for my black strips, if I'm cutting one and a half inch strips, I can use my ruler. Or I can use a one and a half inch strip die that we have for AccuQuilt. And then uh, this, this is $46, uh, dollars, okay? One of the best $46 amounts that you will spend because it's great for smaller work. And that's my little video for the square on square ruler, which I will show you one more time. Looks like so. I got it right side up. You do. Yeah. I hope that is helpful to people. Well, you have a list of AccuQuilt dies. Oh, Suzanne, I don't know what you're asking on what we use today or just in general. You can order AccuQuilt dies from the store at any time. And if you go on the AccuQuilt website and you see that they have sales, any of the sales that they have on AccuQuilt uh, are, are also existing here at the store. Mm -hmm. This is what the six inch block looks like. This is what we used today, is, uh, Eileen used today, was the mix and match six inch block um, cube. Yes. 
And then I used one die, which was this one, that is from the eight inch cube. cube. And a lot of people have the eight inch cube, eight or nine. But um, they sometimes ask me, what should I get next? And rather than go really big, I suggest you try the small one because then you can do things for table runners. Mm -hmm. Six inch squares are nice. If you're making king size quilts, then go big. That's what you need to do. Um, this shows you the different dies that are in this cube. And I will tell you that the same dies are in every single cube. They're just a different size. And it means that all these dies, when you cut the fabric and you put them together into designs, will make, guess what? A six inch block, okay? If it was an eight inch cube, all right, then you would be making eight inch blocks. But then you're discovering that you can use a die like this from an eight inch cube with a six inch design so you can mix and match different sizes. Okay. Okay. Our Thank you, Eileen. She'll be back Merry, next week. Merry Christmas. I'll see you next Friday. We'll do some embroidery. Okay, if anybody wants ordering of the rulers or if you have questions, or anything, please call the store to place your order. Um, I have a very hard time going through comments um, when this is all over to get your orders. Um, it only comes through sometimes through me re-watching the video or sometimes there's comments that I see without watching the video. So if there's anything you would like, please call the store. We're turning the ringers on as soon as I shut off here. Um, call the East Aurora store if you want. We'll put you, we'll cash you out. We'll um, put down on the list of what you need and we'll um, place your order next week and then your ruler or whatever items you need will be here next week. So please call the store 716-652-2811 to place your order for whatever items you are looking for today or on any other items that you're looking for. You can always visit our website. We have a bunch of our fabrics up there. We have some notions, needles, pins, um, all kinds of things. So please call the store to place your order, 716-652-2811. We will see Eileen here uh, next Friday on an embroidery class. And I will see you guys all tomorrow, Saturday, at 9 a.m. for my first uh, session, and then 11 o'clock for my second. Have a wonderful afternoon. Stay warm, stay safe, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.